everybody. Welcome to Psychic Nerds. It's our last show of the year. Uh, tomorrow is New Year's Eve day, and then the next day after that would be New Year's Day. So it is uh, 1230, 2022, where I'm at, um, and it's almost 1 p.m.-ish. It's about uh, 1240 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, surrounded by all my friends here. We got Tarzan with the ever-expanding beard uh, and the ever-expanding uh, perspective uh, about life uh, and the worlds beyond. Uh, I'm a U of M fan. Uh, that lives very close to a precious metals dealer. He might need to seek some help in 2023. Uh, we have Bliss, apparently working overtime in dreams. Uh, human avatar, what have you been up to? Work. Work. <laughs> Got our resident rock star down there, Han the, or Han the Gibson Slayer. Sorry. Uh, Samantha Jane James. How are you, Samantha Jane James? Just unmuting myself here. I just finished having a nice breakfast. And uh, as you can see, I don't have any artwork around here in my place yet, but I'm getting settled in. And I'm glad I was finally able to make it to Psychic Nerds because between like having like no internet or having to move or stuff going sideways, I am just so happy to finally be here and uh, hang out with you guys. I missed you. Well, we missed you. So I'm glad you're here, and this is a great way we can kind of close out the year. We can go uh, maybe do some review things and then talk about the future of 2023 and what we think that looks like or or whatever. And then we have Ghost Santino down there in the lower right-hand corner. How are you, Ghost? Oh, excellent. i um, been having a lot of fun after the last couple of weeks, and uh, I have a lot of fun on these shows. I think um, I, I, I enjoy taking part. I appreciate you, um, like, allowing me on every week the way that you do. Well, you're a big part of what we do over there, at, I think, at Psychic Nerds. Uh, you've always been a really interesting, wonderful, um, somebody that I respect quite a bit um, it, for lots of reasons. I, I respect your intellect and um, your kindness and your directness. And uh, I sent you a nice message the other day privately, and I, and I mean that wholeheartedly, that uh, I'm really um, – appreciative that you give up your time and uh, come hang out and contribute, teach and learn over there, the psychic nerds. I just, I appreciate you very much, man. If I, it's been funny, the, the, the Wednesdays well, live stream question and answers that we do it. It's, they're starting to remind me of our old Lutinos that we used to do just me and you remember. Yeah. Yeah. They were fun. We just kind of freewheeled and kind of went wherever I always appreciate the kind words. I think maybe, you're the kind of guy that used to take in wild skunks as pets when you were a kid. Because I'm always the skunk at the garden party, you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> nobody wants a skunk for a pet. So it's like, you, you know, you're the guy that brings in that skunk, you know? It's, it's a special it place you, in heaven for guys like you. How is it that you view yourself as the skunk? Yeah. The only person I've ever uh, be harsh with you is you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nobody's, everybody's been totally kind. It's just, it's been a rough year and it hasn't been, you know, I don't like delivering rough messages, but, you know, it's been the year for rough messages and I can't pretend that, you know, everything's, you know, rainbows and sunshines and unicorns. Like, that's just, it's not in my nature. So and not everybody, you know, uh, I would love to be that guy that's just like, you know, off we go, you know, to the moon bull market forever but uh i mean um i just can't i you know i just can't do that just can't do that yeah i well i i'd ask yourself i as your friend i'd say just be a little bit kinder with yourself i think uh being honest is a number one priority right for people that i respect and uh, no matter what they think as long as they think and as long as they're honest uh, i'm cool with it you know what i mean um well, as they say, I don't like delivering bad news to good people. And there's a lot of good people here. So, but listen, what I would also say is that there's a lot of opportunity in what's coming. Hell yeah. uh, I know a lot of people are down right now. Everybody's been crushed by these markets. I don't care what you've owned. You've lost money. Um, but I think, I think there's some amazing opportunity shaping up for next year. If you're prepared to navigate uh, like these choppy waters that are coming. There's always tax harvesting. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of that going on, that's for sure. Just taking a look. Let's go. Uh, let me, there's several things I kind of wanted to do today. Uh, probably going to have a shorter show, and, uh, you know, I like to hold uh, some of it back. Um, 
for after 30 minutes. So uh, what do we want to do? Let's go take a look. Well, let's, why don't we go around the horn? Um, what has, yeah, let's kind of just kind of think about the last year, 2022. And it doesn't have to be cryptos. It could be macro. It could be personal things. It doesn't matter to me. But um, what sticks out to you or what was surprising or what did you learn? Something like that about last year. Maybe not what you knew, but something you didn't know. Something that surprised you. Well, I mean, the fraud, the fraud surprised me. I mean, it's just, it just kept coming and coming and coming. And, you know, it was just one bad blow after the next, right? And, and I don't think anybody in the crypto, you know, um, you know, as a crypto investor would have thought that this much fraud would have come out of the system, especially from big players and institutional investors. You know, but here, here's where we are, and it can only get better from here. Yeah, and 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 the the duration of the shit show that nobody cares. I I know that that there's to be a lot of pain before people care, but uh, it's surprising that uh, yeah <laughs> that it just keeps on keeping on and nobody gives a damn and. Uh, it continues and it continues. Yeah, people would ask me, and it surprised me the answer I got from the people on the other side, because I'll tell you right now, that wasn't my answer. More pain. They need more pain. Remember? Everyone, I got that. You remember, Hans, you were at a lot of the live streams. And yeah. it started even last year when inflation, you know, we knew inflation was there. And people were like, well, what's going to happen? Like, are people going to lose their job? No, man, people aren't even working who should be working. You know, the unemployment rate's going to stay really low. It's going to be like the voodoo economics, man. It'll be like gold and silver go up at the same time the market goes up and interest rates are rising and the housing market isn't crashing unless you bought well, like one of these $10 million homes in Miami. You know, that stuff is crashing. But I mean, just ask, you know, Living Blissful, who jumped on a good deal. Um, I just looked yesterday, Sam, me and my husband looked for the last three days and it would cost me another 70,000 to buy a house right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I have, have a military base that's, that's reopening in a couple days. So I'm fighting with a lot of people that had to be here in another two weeks with their families in yeah. that certain market. So yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for your advice. Yeah. And I mean, I'm definitely, I've been off on things for sure. I mean, I've often made the point to people when they're like, oh, you were wrong for that. And I was like, well, this is the grand experiment. I mean, you guys don't realize how much you've helped me on my learning curve go from that, you know, 60%. I don't really know for sure what I'm talking about to, yeah, you know, 90%. This is the way it's going down. And, um, you know, and I was very confident when you came to me and asked me, you know, is the housing market in the U.S., is it going to crash? And I'm like, no, I, I'm still, listen, everybody was telling you when COVID started that the market was going to crash. And that's not what I saw. My brain was saying, of course, it's going to crash. People are getting laid off their jobs. Like, why would the housing market go crazy? But nope, that's not what the people on the other side said. So when I, you know, and this was after the fact, again, looking back to how I felt about that. So now when I have individual situations come into me, I can now gauge it much better. So I'm, I'm really good. I'm getting really good at like that kind of stuff now because I find that the emotions out in the ethos, it's so much easier to pick up, pick out and just sort of, you just, you go a little bit, I call it going to the right. That's the future. Cause time is, I've discovered time is linear. And um, yeah, and I've described to people about trying to, call certain things would be like dropping a golf ball into the hole in one at 30,000 feet. For example, the exact date of peace for um, the Ukraine. But wow, they're talking peace now at Christmas time, aren't they? And there was like a couple of months ago, it was like there was no chance. So again, there's a lot of stuff that is um, on the positive side is coming in the works. Not that it's 70,000 more to buy a house in you know an average person's price range, which is what I felt was going to be lifted up quite a bit but yeah that would be my biggest surprise was the amount of pain that pe I'm, I'm with Hans on that the amount of pain that people it was going to require for them to start opening up their eyes and actually start pushing back and saying hey some of these um these stupid um ideas aren't aren't working out anybody else 
uh, I'm feeling actually really good about last year. Uh, now that I'm here <clears throat> in my new home and I've been here for about six weeks, I feel like I'm, I'm not working yet. So I have a lot of downtime, a lot of time just to spend with myself thinking about it. <clears throat> and up until recently, I was still kind of like, I could have cashed out this much at this point and I could have had this much. And I was really, you know, that doesn't help you. Like there's a, there's a hindsight that's smart. Like, well, I could have, would have, should have. And then you have to let it go and not beat yourself up and just, you know, so walking that fine line, <clears throat> it's been made real clear to me in the last couple days that had I cashed out um, and been smarter about cashing out from my mind's point of view, my husband really wanted to move into Fort Myers. And I would have cashed out all that money to buy a house that potentially wouldn't be there because the, the places we were looking at, the restaurants that we ate at are gone. They were, they were wiped away by that hurricane. So I'm feeling kind of grateful that, because now I'm still sitting on it. I still have it. And, I, and I'm not in, a, in an area that got wiped out. So I just kept telling him I didn't, I didn't feel like that was the thing to do. And I couldn't express it to him why. But I went with my gut and I didn't cash out as much as, you know, and, and, and move then. And it, it's turning out to be a really wise decision. We couldn't be any happier than where we are right now. And had I cashed out a bunch of money and because I know me, if I had it in the bank, I, I wouldn't want it in the bank. I would want to be finding a property. And I was looking and I wasn't looking in the right places in Florida for me because we had to look at all those other places first before we came here. And then when we came here, because we looked for two years uh, and, and people might not know that we, we, we went all over for two years looking to walk on the ground, walk around to see how it felt. And uh, we didn't just look in Florida either. We looked in multiple other states and we were talking about it recently, like, well, kind of wish we would have come here first, but then we wouldn't have known because when we walked here, it was like, no, this feels completely differently. Our guts, we weren't even here yet. We were on the highway coming here and we were already looking at each other going, I I'm at home. Like my gut just feels like we're at home. So I'm more grateful now that I listened to my gut. I didn't cash out more because it would already be gone and, and I'd be in a whole different circumstances now. So Maybe somebody else didn't cash out as much and you're still beating yourself up and maybe there's a reason for it. And uh, be kinder on yourself because I think 2023 was a, a great opportunity to to get um, in with your gut and let your gut guide you to where you need to go. And it was really a challenge for me to sell my business and close my business and, and move out of Virginia. And I feel so good about it. I feel like I rose to the challenge and let go of an old dream to grab a new dream. And I think that's where 2023 keeps going. Like it's time to grab new dreams, let go of old stuff, but in a productive way where you don't beat yourself over the head for the mistakes you think you made. Yeah, Is regrets, that? regrets, terrible. Um, we're all human. We all have regret. Uh, but I agree with you, Bliss. Um, you don't turn that into, um, you know, you don't let it take hold because it, it, then you become paralyzed and you're afraid to make any decisions. And it's, it's not good. It's just not good. Um, I know that in Australia and Canada, like housing is in, is in the process of collapsing. It's basically collapsing. Uh, so, and that's going to go into next year. Uh, I'm not an expert on the U S market. Um, and you know, I, uh, I know Sam is, um, me and her may differ a little bit on this. I, I think so, but not really in some ways. I just think that, uh, the Sun Belt states will probably hang on the best in real estate because there is a lot of demand for those states but i do think eventually they roll over as well um not to the same level not a canadian style rollover but they will roll over um we're, they're just lagging so you're seeing you're seeing the wave of housing the housing bubble pop in stages all over the world and so it happens in the most leveraged areas first and then it eventually, though, it, it comes in like a wave and takes everything. Uh, every bubble is like that. There's no bubble that doesn't act like that. So it will happen. Um, it, prices will soften. I suspect you'll see that next year. Um, and I think the surprise will be that interest rates don't come down the way people think. I think, I think Sam and I are agreed on that. I don't, I don't want to speak for her, but I think interest rates stay stubbornly high. Um, and I think that just really sucks every, people are expecting this big pivot where suddenly, you know, the Fed comes in and lowers interest rates. They won't be in a position to be able to do that. So I think that's, what's going to eventually be the nail in the coffin for 
you know, those that stand strong, you know, uh, in the housing market, as they say, they shoot the generals last, right? So when the NASDAQ rolled over, you know, only now we're seeing Amazon and Apple and the big guys roll over just in the last few months. They were the ones that everybody thought these guys can't fail, right? Every bubble is kind of like that. It has its areas in that bubble where people have a lot of faith in and they, it looks like they're going to escape the selling, but then eventually they capitulate at the end, right? So, um, and, and I, you know, this issue of housing comes up a lot because everybody owns a house. What I would say is if you, you're sitting in a house and you've paid for it, you got nothing to worry about. It's your place. If, if you're not using your home as an investment, you're using it as a place to live, then none of this matters to you. Like literally, if you're using your home for an investment, you're going to have a lot of problems in 2023, 2024. Um, I don't care where you live. You know, that's kind of, uh, and, and as, as far as uh, what I learned from like, I learned a lot. I made a lot of mistakes last year. Um, but one thing uh, that caught me by surprise was, you know, all bear markets have these really aggressive rallies, you know, that usually last days or weeks. And this market did not really give us that. It gave us a bit of a rally over the summer, but it wasn't much to write home about. It has been straight down for a year. And even though I called a bear market and I said it would be bad, I said hodlers would be destroyed in what's coming. All that proved to be right. But even I was surprised that there was never a a really aggressive bear market rally in that first leg down. Remains to be seen if we still see something like that in 2023, always possible. But I think that will be an opportunity to get out if that happens. Um, I would not expect that. Nobody should be expecting we're going to suddenly go into another bull market. Some markets will be in a bull market, but the areas that we're talking about, like crypto, housing, technology, um, I think most of that remains firmly in you know, a bear market at some stage next year and probably into the following year. Just my opinion. I'll go next. Boy, what is something uh, I didn't expect? <clears throat> I didn't expect to gold to be basically the price uh, it is now. It's well, let me pull up a chart. Um, basically the same spot we were at just a year ago with even with all the turmoil uh, over last year, uh, right? Uh, if we go back to January of 2022, we're about in the same range. Um, and I didn't expect that. I expected, even though we've got an amazing uh, rally in uh, precious metals markets, especially silver, I didn't expect as we went on through this year and things just kind of got worse and worse and worse, um, things are, in my opinion, deteriorating. Uh, pretty solidly, pretty routinely. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect that we would basically, uh, the price of gold would be exactly, well, right, basically where it was last year. So that was surprising to me. Um, yet, you can almost go and look at any metric you want to to look at, and it says gold buyers binge on biggest volumes for 55 years, right? So there's tons of acquiring of, of metals. Um, so that's what surprises me, is that you, uh, any metric you can look at, it seems the demand is there, but price is not. So that's that's one thing that's really shocked me, I guess, over this year that I didn't anticipate, that I that I think I got wrong. I expected gold to be much higher at this point uh, than it is, even though uh, price will probably catch up to demand. Uh, but yeah, that sticks out for me. Um, any anybody else got got anything? I'll I'll go next. Um, this is more of a uh, grateful. I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for this last uh, six years, you know, in the market. Because it's given me something. It's given me a, uh, a purpose to look at, to grow my mind. And <clears throat> over this uh, over this time, I've been looking at it's the charts you know, of, of, of crypto. And that would, it would translate into, into other charts, I guess. But now I can see the chart for what they are, you know, their, their form. And it's just not the looking at it. It's, uh, 
it's real it's a technical part of you know looking at percentages looking at where we came from what transpired in the past forward seems to be very <laughs> manipulated in into the same ranges and based on those looking at that and Sam's woo about where she saw things going, I think it was two, three years ago that we, I, I said, I said, we're going to go for, we're going to go to 10 trillion and then we'll do a hundred trillion. And Sam said eight trillion and then a hundred trillion. And I was doing it just from multiplications, you know, of, of growth that we, we had seen in the past. But now I look at um, I look at the both the log and the not log charts and their form, where they have been in times through, and and we're basing now to me, and this is where we start going up. It's not going to be a straight up. And Santino, I think our bear market rally is right in front of us. In the next 10 weeks, I think we'll almost complete it in the next 20 weeks and we'll be back to Sam's three trillion where she's where she's been seeing it. And that's where the numbers tell me it's going to going right back to where we were and we'll and we'll get a reversal right there. But the time frames are here. We're sitting right in it. And that, that's what I'm thankful for, that I think I can see it now in a physical form. And understand it and feel it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. I think it's it's pot very possible in January we will see that. We'll see the metals and crypto rise. Um, the difference will be the metals will keep going, and many of the crypto will will die off after this next bear market rally. I think that's that's when we start to see the difference. They decouple from each other. Not all crypto, but most of them will, um, because they're they're part of the speculative bubble that has ended the crypto that acts like commodities or monetary coins. I think they have a chance at moving with gold and silver. Uh, so I think selection is going to be key, but I, I wouldn't disagree with you, Tarzan. And that's still a possibility in the first few months of next year, but I'm more certain about gold and silver than I am about crypto. I think it's the first five months of the year. I think it'll take us about five months to go to the top. I think we, I think we peak out maybe at the at the first, around the first of June, based on charts, based on old formula. You know where we went, what we've done before, time frames in between, and us basically we you know we bottomed what a few weeks ago. We bottomed around you know October the thirty first. Well, some crypt, not all crypto, many crypto are hitting up new lows uh, and they're still bleeding out. New lows uh, every week. For yeah, many, 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 many. I, I, almost I'm every day. Talking, <laughs> I'm talking about Bitcoin, the master of yeah. the market to me, you know, I mean, the, the Bitcoin is going to be the, the master coin. It's going to tell us where we're going, where we've bottomed out. And I think uh, I, agree, I agree. Bitcoin is been ETH, stuck at 16.5 Ethereum. ETH. Yeah. ETH stuck at 12, ETH. whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think there's a good chance that because they refuse to go down, you know, this could be, you know, this could be a long base. Um, there's still a shot, though, you know, that they can lurch a bit lower. But I don't know. I'm long Ethereum now. I'm not long much in crypto anymore, but I am long Ethereum. Um, and so if it goes to 800, I'm OK with that. Um, but I'm also prepared to wait. Like when I say hodl, you know, I'm prepared to hold it for the next five years. And I think any crypto investor should be looking at those time frames. So understanding that a lot of what they own now probably ain't coming back. You 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 might get a bear market rally. Some of these ghost chains, you could get two or three X out of them. Then they'll roll over and they'll be done. And And a lot of coins will act that way, in my opinion. So Tarzan, kind of back to the question, what surprised you about it? 2022 or something you learned something you got wrong something like that that there are actually metrics 
that the universe follows. You know, in, in even though the markets are run off a of human emotion, if you look at the human emotion, it's all it's like there's a cause and then an effect. And the cause is almost almost predetermined. It's set in motion before we feel before we feel the effect. And the effect, you know, is whenever we you know our brains turn on and we move the market with our emotion. And that emotion turns into physical, you know, deeds. It, to me, to understand uh, Fibonacci sequences, you know, uh, trying to use the Fibonacci, you know, on the charts and looking at what they do. I mean, it's it's uncanny where they go. On those lines, on those percentages, it, it's it's it happens. You, you, just, you, you, you just described you just described woo charting. That's what woo charting is. It's that unknown, the way the universe patterns unfold, and they do it in repeating patterns in many things. And charting is one way that it expresses itself. Um, it expresses itself in nature all the time. So um, it, it's very difficult to accurately do that short term. But longer term, long term, it's, yeah, it's, very, it's, it's why, quite accurate. That's why yeah. I said that six years of me really looking at it. Now, I've been looking at crypto, you know, since 14 or so since 2014, 13, back when XRP was Ripple. You know, you bought Ripple, <laughs> you know, you didn't know it was XRP, but it was 0. 0.0006 or two or something like that. But I never really, I never really got into the charting and looking at the charts until, you know, the summer or the spring of 2017. And now I've got all this time that I've been able to look at it. Now I can see the whole thing at once. And it, it's like you're getting a super high view of what's going on. And yeah, you know, I've been aware of fractals in nature, you know, my whole life. But, you know, I didn't think the charts would be a fractal. It's, it's a fractal as well. Because it's it, charts are painted by human psychology. Yeah. And humans operate in consciousness through fractals. That's, that's why you can predict things before they happen. You can see something happening on a chart and suddenly news develops to make the chart work. Um, yeah, that's, that, what, it, that's the freaky thing to me. It happens all the time. It's that, it's that it thing all the time. there. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and you see that when you, when you do a lot of comparison charts, like Bitcoin to silver, for instance. Suddenly you see them crossing each other. And suddenly you see silver outperforming Bitcoin. You don't know what's going to cause that, but the long-term chart is telling you that. I've been seeing it for a year now, and it, and it worked out. You know, uh, crypto has been crushed, and silver goes on. Uh, now that chart predicted that a year and a half ago. Uh, that's a fractal. The same. Um, let's say that 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 what Sam sees, I think, for, you know, the early part of 2023 is that we get some resolution over there in the Ukraine and Russia. It, it's, look, the charts are telling me that something's coming, that we're based out here, that we should go up. You know, uh, a, a lot of people's different kinds of charts that I've been, uh, really like uh, Plan B's chart that shows the whole market, you know, and how it's reacted in the past, and it's painted in colors. And it's painting the same colors that we had in the base of 2017 and the base of the 2014 market. And the same time frame, the time frame out, out to, you know, the halving is a is an upward movement. You know, we go upward towards the halving. Well, I can tell you, and I've been saying this for a long time now, I have a number of charts smashing into each other this spring so in other words i'm seeing a uh, real uh volatile action currencies the debt market and gold and silver uh around the springtime so something happens we don't know yet what it will be but something causes that to happen perhaps it's a debt sovereign crisis or something i don't know 
But, you know, and, and like I said, I could be off by a few weeks or even a few months, but they are definitely coming together in a way that is very volatile, which means some assets will get crushed and some will go up. I've seen this movie before and we're coming into a time like that. What about, uh, I, uh, sorry, Sam, you know, I was going to ask no, you about no, the Bank no. of Japan. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, please. You were saying, what What do you think will happen if it's, because you said what, you know, something's going to happen. I think it's the Bank of Japan. I think that's going to be the first one to go. First, I was thinking the UK, right? I was like, okay, well, things are going to be really bad in the UK. But, you know, the more that I look at sort of the macro, I'm like, you know what? I think I think things are really going to go sideways for Japan. And then the UK will follow. And then Europe will follow. And then this is when you're going to see, because I don't see that big flood of money. Even though money's coming to the U.S., I don't see the big flood of money yet that I saw. I was like, okay, it hasn't happened yet. So let's talk about that. Let's hold that for a second because that's one of the things I wanted to get into. H.A., did you, you get a chance to just kind of express maybe something you missed, something shocked you, uh, something you were surprised by, something you got wrong, I don't know, in 2022? Mm, I got a lot running wrong. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, I can talk a lot wrong in 2022. Got a lot right. I mean, I knew, now that's Rudy, man. Um, I got, I, you know, I, I knew not to get into um, 3AC Celsius or FTX. Stayed out of Luna. Yep. Stayed out of Luna. Yeah, I avoided all that.